For over a decade, Franklin Delano Roosevelt was known to Americans as the boss, the man in the White House, the president. He guided the country through some of its most troubling endeavors, a constant in a world beset by great instability. Let me assert my firm belief that the only thing we have to fear is fear itself. When President Roosevelt took office for the first time in 1932, the United States was racked with depression. Millions were out of work. Banks were failing. Farms and factories were foreclosing. Hope seemed a distant fantasy. But hope would begin to take shape within the first 100 days of Roosevelt's presidency. Every ounce of strength, every resource at our command, we have devoted and we are devoting to the end of justifying your confidence. We are encouraged to believe that a wise and sensible beginning has been made. Roosevelt's rush of New Deal legislation rallied a stagnant economy. Slowly but surely, banks reopened. Men and women went back to work. My most immediate concern is in carrying out the purposes of the great work program just enacted by the Congress. Its first objective is to put men and women now on the relief rolls to work. Relief, reform, and rejuvenation would mark Roosevelt's first term as president, carrying him onto a second term, where he continued to plow a path towards recovery. We in America know that our own democratic institutions can be preserved and made to work. But in order to preserve them, we need to act together. Throughout his presidency, Roosevelt wasn't just the man in the White House. He was the man in every house. His voice was broadcast into living rooms all over the country using his so-called fireside chats to keep American citizens informed, comforted, and reassured. On this Sabbath evening in our homes, in the midst of our American families, let us calmly consider what we have done and what we must do. By Roosevelt's third term, what we must do became an all-encompassing consideration as the nation stood on the brink of world war. We are now in this war. We're all in it, all the way. Every single man, woman, and child is a partner in the most tremendous undertaking of our American history. We must share together the bad news and the good news, the defeats and the victories, the changing fortunes of war. With World War II, President Roosevelt was confronted with yet another exceptional undertaking. The free world was at stake, and to preserve it, Roosevelt directed a unified front the likes of which America had never seen before. Some of us are fighting the war in airplanes five miles above the continent of Europe or the islands of the Pacific, and some of us are fighting it in mines deep down in the earth of Pennsylvania or Montana. By 1944, Roosevelt steered the United States beyond a Great Depression and was in the midst of achieving victory in a global war. Asking anyone else to finish what he started seemed ludicrous to most Americans. And despite signs of the aging president's deteriorating health, Roosevelt was elected for a fourth term. People, uh, people wanted him to live. He thought he would live out his term. He was thinking, this was the last term, this was retirement, finish the war, retire to Warm Springs. He was actually thinking ahead. For his fourth term, Roosevelt chose Harry S. Truman, a senator from Missouri, to replace Henry Wallace as vice president. Henry Wallace was very liberal, a little too liberal even for the liberals. And my grandfather was a good compromise candidate. A good compromise in the event that the feeble 63-year-old Roosevelt wouldn't live out the rest of his term. No matter who you talk to, you get conflicting, conflicting thoughts. Even, even in my family, 
You know, I would ask my mother one day, didn't you know how sick FDR was? And, oh, yes. And then you ask her some other time, it's like, well, no, we, we thought he would make it through. This country had kind of a national, not amnesia, a national, we fooled ourselves. We wanted to fool ourselves that the man who had been president for more than 12 years had brought us through the Great Depression was, was indestructible. We hoped he was. But hope wouldn't be enough. Years of strain and stress, reviving a depressed nation, the unending demands of an international calamity finally caught up with Franklin Roosevelt, and on April 12, 1945, he suffered a massive stroke and died of a cerebral hemorrhage. The loss of Franklin Delano Roosevelt was deeply felt by people all around the world. Roosevelt's death marked a change Americans hadn't known for a generation. For the first time in years, they had a new commander-in-chief, one not named Roosevelt, but instead named Truman. He himself said when he found out he was president, he felt like the sun, the moon, and all the planets had fallen on him. It was a feeling shared by a nation that had grown so accustomed to one familiar leader, but Roosevelt's death would hardly break the country. His time spent in office saw the emergence of a strong, united America, a world power that was only just beginning to hit its stride.